Hi, this week we're going to talk about three different teaching methods that we can use to engage our students in instruction even when uh, they can't necessarily be physically present in our classrooms. And this was obviously very important during the COVID pandemic, but can be really helpful for our learners uh, when they can't make it to our classroom, whether it because of sickness or family responsibilities or other things going on in their lives. One thing to really highlight though is a lot of the terminology been being used about different modalities for teaching or different ways of teaching. It's not always easy to understand what exactly they mean because people sometimes use them, uh, use a word, but actually mean different things about it. So we're going to explore that a little bit. Uh, I love the, the movie The Princess Bride and this quote's great. You keep using that word, but I don't think it means what you think it means. And that's particularly uh, applicable to the blend, term blended learning. Uh, blended learning, um, it means a whole bunch of different things depending on who you're talking to. Um, some, it, it literally means combining face-to-face -face and uh, online modalities, teaching modalities, but how that blend looks can vary uh, immensely between two different uh, instructors using that. So from uh, my master's thesis a few years ago, because I was looking at flipped learning, I said blended learning has been applied to such a wide range of pedagogies that it no longer has meaning in a comparative research context. So uh, with that in mind, let's uh, let's uh, review some definitions and uh, this might be a good way or a way that I find helpful anyways to look at the different teaching methods. So there's the blended hybrid method and we can see here uh, blended hybrid typically means some sort of combination of face-to-face -face in the classroom and asynchronous consecutive or self-paced online learning how much face-to-face, -face, how much uh, consecutive uh, online really depends on the, the instructor and how they've uh, engineered their course. But at a very basic level, that's what blended or hybrid means. And then we have blended synchronous. So we have face-to-face -face classroom as well as uh, synchronous concurrent, which typically is Zoom or other video conferencing technology where the learner uh, chooses the modality, whether they be in, in class or face-to-face. -face. Another common uh, term you'll hear used is high flex, and that is face-to-face uh, -face in the classroom or Zoom or asynchronous uh, consecutive. Um, and that is what we're using in, uh, in the class, uh, in our class. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And the last modality is multi-access. And this was actually uh, a term coined by my advisor for my master's thesis. And it gives learners, the learner chooses the modality between face-to-face -face in the classroom, Zoom, or asynchronous, depending on their particular circumstances, potentially for the whole course, or even just for uh, any particular week or class uh, that's being uh, uh, run in the course. Uh, in my personal experience though, it's really difficult uh, to have uh, synchronous face-to-face -face, uh, and synchronous online when there's very few on face-to-face uh, -face folks running. So for example in the Digital Scholarship Commons where I teach uh, a lot, uh, we I found it extremely difficult if I have you know, 10 or 15 or 20 online people and then only one or two face-to-face. -face. So uh, again, if you decide to do a face-to-face -face and online at the same time, just be aware that if there's a, a heavy imbalance in terms of the people participating in those two modalities, that can be difficult. I, that said, I have found it easier if there's a lot of online folks and only one or two, or a lot of face-to-face -face folks and only one or two online. But the reverse, for whatever reason, uh, it was quite difficult for me uh, to make sure that the needs of the face-to-face uh, -face folks are being met if there's a whole bunch of online. Hope that makes sense. One thing that can help in both circumstances, though, is if you have some sort of a, a teaching assistant to help you, 
uh, with the online participants in particular. Um, but uh, we don't always have the luxury of that. Uh, if you do have, uh, if you are conducting an online class, one thing that can be helpful if you don't have a teaching assistant is to deputize one of your uh, learners to monitor the chat for you just so that they can bring your attention any questions that are being posed in the chat that you uh, aren't noticing because you're in the moment uh, teaching uh, teaching the class. Uh, flipped learning is something that's often integrated into the uh, multi-access and I iFlex uh, modalities and that's basically where you uh, have pre-class work uh, given to your learners, sort of the lecture type parts of the, uh, of the instruction, so that the majority of the uh, in-class or face-to-face -face or synchronous instruction can, hap can be active learning, applying the knowledge and concepts that they've been introduced to in class. Uh, and then Potentially, students can check their understanding after the class is over, but if they do have any questions or get stuck uh, when they're doing the active learning type activities, they can ask you because you're engaging with them in real time. And now it's time for hands-on 